Republicans are pressuring Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid to allow a vote on a resolution that would let military chaplains freely minister during the government shutdown. Under current law, some military priests could be arrested for doing so. The House voted almost unanimously to change that, and Minority Leader Mitch McConnell today said it was the Senate's turn to vote. If we can't agree on a bill to fund the entire government, let's at least pass the most urgent pieces of it. Over the weekend, the House passed a bill that said a government shutdown doesn't affect the exercise of religion on military bases. 184 Democrats agreed. Senator Reid has not yet says, said whether he will or will not take up that legislation, believe it or not. My next guest says the refusal to negotiate on the part of the president and the Democrats the height of hypocrisy. Joining us now, Congressman Tom Cole, a member of the House Appropriations, Budget and Rules Committees. Congressman, good to have you with us. The really idea, great to be with you. The idea that a president refuses to negotiate on the debt ceiling, to, to negotiate uh, on a continuing resolution, or for that matter, anything with the Congress of the United States, is, as the president loves to say about such issues, unprecedented, isn't it? <laughs> It really is. I mean, you can't imagine Ronald Reagan or Bill Clinton or LBJ or any other president uh, not being willing to sit down and talk, particularly when they need the votes. Instead, the president's position is, give me everything I want, and then I'm willing to talk to you. And that's simply not acceptable. You know, he didn't vote to raise the debt ceiling when he was uh, in the United States Senate. Uh, instead, he moralized, gave us a lecture about debt. Uh, but he wants to do us to do for him what he wouldn't do for George Bush. We're willing, if he's willing to sit down and negotiate, find some common down and keep uh, whittling this deficit down. There was a, as we're looking at video of the president there over at FEMA, he, the president had refused to sign the, the legislation that the House had advanced uh, uh, and to take it up. Uh, as he is basically admonishing the House Republicans in front of the same employees that he had refused to bring back from furlough. I, I mean, this is getting beyond circuitous and uh, uh, stretching the bounds of, uh, of all reason, isn't it? Well, the hypocrisy here is just simply breathtaking. Again, the president's basically saying, and many of my friends on the Democratic side, although some in the House and across, is give us everything we want or we won't even talk to you. Uh, frankly, if you think it's important to open the government, we've opened big chunks of it. Uh, we agree, then pass these bills and let's keep moving down the road. Sometimes the best way to get to a compromise is step by step. But again, holding this position that we won't even sit down and talk and negotiate and that we're going to dictate what the outcome is before there's a negotiation, nobody in their right mind is going to give to that. And I think the speaker's made it abundantly clear he's not going to surrender that kind of blackmail. Uh, and I think a lot of people are surprised that Speaker Boehner has stood up as strong uh, and as forcefully as he has and if if in fact uh, if anything he's he's more uh, forceful it seems right now in his position and that of your caucus uh, in standing up to the president and the longer this yeah. goes uh, uh, congressman it, it seems there's e even greater impetus for and necessity uh, for the house to stand up for its constitutional prerogatives well, I think there is. And again, we're not saying that, uh, you know, it has to be all our way. We recognize the Democrats control the Senate and that uh, the president's a Democrat. But we control the House. We're willing to negotiate. Uh, Speaker Boehner demonstrated that in the summer of 2011 when he negotiated. Had to accept some things he didn't want, but got $2 trillion worth of spending cuts. That's why the budget deficits right. come down. He's prepared to do that again. I don't know why. It's the president who's moved from being willing to negotiate in 2011 to being unwilling to negotiate today. Well, Congressman, uh, very quickly, we're out of time. How do you think this resolves? I think sooner or later they'll get in a room and they'll negotiate, and hopefully uh, we won't default. I think that'd be a disaster. But if the president won't talk to anybody, that's, as the speaker said, that's the road we're on. Uh, the road we're on, and it, and it is the president, as you point out, who as president uh, has his hands on the wheel. It'll be his vision as to the default. Congressman, it's good, good to have you with us. Thanks for being with us. Tom Thank Cole. Thank you. Turning to Wall Street, stop.